Good day. My name is Roger Pierce, and I'm here with Lily Ma. I'll introduce Lily in just a second. But well, welcome. This is an entrepreneur question and answer session. What we're doing is we're taking questions received on Evan Carmichael's YouTube channel, and we're doing our best to answer them. Evan's a very busy guy, and while he would love to be here doing this himself, I'm sure, he's given us the chance to address his audience questions. So every week we're going to pick a handful of questions and provide you with some small business expert answers. And that's who I am. Again, my name is Roger Pierce. I'm a small business expert. I have operated 13 small businesses that I care to remember. My company works with big brands like banks, to develop small business content for small business owners, things like infographics, videos, ebooks, templates, and tools entrepreneurs can use. We create that material and then the, the brands put it on their website to engage small business owners. I'm also the co author of a small business book, and I have personally trained thousands of entrepreneurs in seminars and webinars over the last 20 years. So hopefully, I can share some of that experience with people tuning in today, and I can answer the questions that have been presented in front of us. But most importantly, my co-presenter, Lily Ma. Yes, hello everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you guys are watching from. Uh, so my name is Lily. I work as a coach on Evan Carmichael's team. What I do is I coach people with their businesses, uh, whether they are a startup all the way up to larger corporations. So I thought it would be a fantastic idea to join forces with Roger using his expertise to answer some of the questions that people have. So I have some questions ready. Ready? I am ready. Awesome. Okay, so we're going get, to get right into it. So first question comes from Troy. And I'll read it exactly as it's right here. So Troy says, I'm humbly needing help in how I can invest in my passion. Okay, I'm fond of social media marketing, hence digital marketing in this case. I'm also passionate on making my own music beats as well as dancing. An example, produce electro music as well as being an online entrepreneur. The main thing right now, which affects me a lot, is that I'm still a second year college student, need to be thoroughly mentored and advised on caring and managing my own as smart as I can be, especially how can I make daily inputs in my goals already mentioned above, how can I balance all of that while being a student and doing schoolwork? Wow, Troy, you've got a lot going on. Congratulations. I know what it's like to balance a business and go to school. So I'm going to address this question in a couple of sections. Number one, the good news is you're not alone. There are organizations out there that do nothing but support entrepreneurs in college and university around the world. I've got a couple of them I'm going to point you to. I'm not quite sure which country you're in, so I'm going to give you information for both Canada and the US. In the States, check out the Collegiate Entrepreneurs Organization. Their website is www.c-e-o.org. They're an organization that does mentoring, workshops, resources, support, inspiration for people just like you who are starting a business while they're in school. In Canada, I would check out Enactus, Enactus Canada, enactus.ca, E-N-A-C-U-T-U-S.ca. Enactus is pretty good. It includes Students in Free Enterprise, or the former organization called Students in Free Enterprise and is active in 36 countries. So these organizations will probably have a chapter in your university or college. So I would go and see if there is an active chapter, and if there's not, reach out to the, the, the national website and see how you can get involved. Second comment was, you know, what can you do to make your business really easy so you can continue on in school? And I kept thinking about stock music, stock music beds, selling your beats, that kind of thing. And I looked up a few websites to get, get an idea of your industry. This might not be exactly what you're doing, but I know there's money to be made selling through websites such as musicbed.com. That's just one example. From what I can tell, they will take material from artists like you 
and then try to sell it through their website and they take a commission of course but that way you've got a reseller for your music tracks and there's a big market out there because so many people are doing videos like this one we're doing on online and they need a music track in the background so I would check out music bed resellers stock music companies that could help you online but Troy most importantly you know stay in school I know you're excited about your business everyone likes to follow the story of Mark Zuckerberg and how he dropped out of Harvard and of course went on to become a billionaire with Facebook but that doesn't always happen I'm sure you've got a great future ahead of you but a good education and finishing your diploma or your degree is like insurance just in case that rocky path of entrepreneurship doesn't work out the way you want it to. Hmm. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Roger. You did a lot of research around uh, the music beats. That's, that's really, really nice of you. And I'm sure Troy is going to be really appreciative of that. Uh, I think for me, um, thinking about Troy's situation, he's in school. I, you know, I know how it's like to have multiple passions while still being in school and, and still leading towards a path of a career where you can start a family. Like you were saying, you know, stay in school. You know, we're always like following following Mark Zuckerberg's story. He's, he's one in a bazillion success stories. So my advice for Troy is while you're still in school, is there a way you can find someone you could intern under? So I look at my own story. I was very interested in the fashion industry when I was in high school. And I wanted to find ways to learn. I found a really small company near my house where they designed their own hospital scrubs. So it wasn't even that related to like the high fashion that I wanted, but I wanted to learn um, how to create your own fashion from the bottom up. So finding someone at a small scale and really learning the business inside out. First of all, to see if you actually like the music industry, that's another thing too. Sometimes we have a romanticized version of how it looks like. I had a romanticized version of how the fashion industry looked like. So interning really, really helped me while I was in high school. And uh, I realized that I didn't wanna go into fashion design. What I really wanted to do was I wanted to go into purchasing, which is what I ended up doing for the last 14 years of my life. And then I learned a lot about business that way, which helped me as an entrepreneur today. So learning some under someone that is accessible in your, um, in your field. Again, we don't know where Troy is writing from. He could either be in the States or in Canada or somewhere around the world. You could quite simply use a very sophisticated system called Google. You could easily Google uh, people who are in your industry and see what you, where you can learn from, from them. Great tips, thanks. Thanks so much, Lily. Yeah, all right, time for a next one. Okay. Next one, okay, so this comes from Kevin. Kevin says, I'm an inspiring entrepreneur and having problems with my business plan. Wanted to know how I can set it up or do I even need one? <laughs> this is a question I've heard a lot. You know, writing a business plan can be a challenge, can be a daunting task because it's not, it's easy to get wrapped up in too much information and, and it's, it's, it's tough because you've got to research all kinds of different elements but here's the thing it's supposed to be a little bit tough a business plan is supposed to make you think through your idea before execution so that you've dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's and really put the time and the research into investigating your idea before you go spending all your time and money to pull it off there's an old expression people don't plan to fail they fail to plan so a business plan in my opinion is essential because look it's going to do a couple things it's going to tell people around you what your business will do and how it's going to do it but more importantly it's going to tell you what to do and guide your efforts to help you stay focused because chances are you don't have a lot of time or money to waste on trial and error so take the time to do a plan I've seen people take years to perfect their small business plan. I think three to six months, poking away at it, refining it, checking out different sections. You've got to look at the finance, the marketing, the operations, the team, the product, the legal issues, the administration, the incorporation, if you're doing that, all kinds of things go into a business plan. And you know what, keep it simple. Kevin, I wouldn't get wrapped up in a five-year plan because that's too far away. 
it's hard to see five years in the future who can, just do a two-year plan and then update it every two years. Chances are your business now is going to be very different in two years anyway, so you're going to want to have that flexibility going forward. If you need a business plan template, sounds like you have one. If you need one, feel free to email me, roger.pierce at piercewords.com, and I'll send you a sample. We've developed dozens of them for various companies. Bottom line is, Kevin, stay the course, get that plan done. It's an invaluable tool. Lily, what are your thoughts? I think so too. I had a good fortune in uh, learning how to develop a business plan when I was in school. Uh, when I studied retail management, one of the things that we had to do was develop a business plan. So I had, I already had some sort of template. You also are, uh, already answered the question and how to begin. There are tons of templates out there. Um, in terms of the templates, would you suggest uh, different business plans for different types of businesses or um, also what if um, Kevin was starting a business from scratch but with zero dollars and he's not looking for funding? How, how would your business plan be different um, depending on what you want out of it? It's a good question. You've identified a couple of issues. Number one, you're right, find a plan that fits your business. Is it a retail business? Is it a service business? Is it a manufacturing business? And there are templates out there available for each of those categories. Secondly, a plan is going to be a lot less complex if you don't need to raise any external money. Mm -hmm. If you're going to present your plan to a banker or to an investor, you're going to want to put a little extra effort into it because now you're talking about playing with someone else's money. And chances are anyone who reads that plan wants to see all the details about where their money is going to go, how your business is going to repay them, what's the exit strategy. So really the simplest plan would be, in my opinion, a service-based business and one that's just to guide you and your internal team. And while we're on this topic, because I, I think a lot of folks would be interested in, um, in writing business plans and how to get started, uh, how often would you suggest uh, people revisit their business plan? So for example, with Kevin, he writes his business plan, it's good, it's finalized. How often should he go back to look at his numbers and see if his, um, his goals even came true? The answer is every quarter you should revisit your business plan. Because okay. look, let's say you did a two-year plan, then you simply break it down into annual strategies and quarterly results. So really all you have to do is make sure you're doing what you plan to do quarter by quarter and your vision should be realized. Hmm. Okay, really good, I like it. Okay, so next question from Tim. So Tim, we know where Tim lives. So Tim is, uh, he's from Johannes, Johannesburg, South Africa. So he's an artist and he does oil paintings with, and pencil drawings as well of, of South African wildlife. He says, I sell canvas prints of the oil paintings in three sizes, which are stretched over wooden frame and the quality paper prints of the pencil drawings are mounted on a frame. Recently, I have developed a new product using images on greeting and gift cards. Over the past months, I have been trying to attract buyers in the large retail stores in the US. To date, I haven't had much success. I feel like I'm going about this the wrong way. Please give me the best possible route to follow, follow this to get into the US market specifically. Well, well, congratulations, Tim. That sounds like a heck of a business if you're planning to expand it across the borders and across the ocean. Mm -hmm. I think you've got a couple of different options. Number one, you can find a distributor, somebody who can resell your art for you and has relationships already existing with those big retailers that you've been trying unsuccessfully to crack into. And I, I hear your pain. Selling to big companies is what I do every day. It takes a long time. You'll get a lot of doors slammed in your face. Doesn't mean you should give up, but there might be a better way to go about it. And I'm in a big favor of working with people who already have a relationship with the clients you're trying to engage. So that would be professional distributors who know those retailers and can start to speak on your behalf. Finding a distributor will take some research, but it's out there. I suggest that you start by talking to an art gallery, just one somewhere in the US, maybe you already have a customer, and ask them, you know, do you know any 
art distribution companies or firms that I might be able to check out and have a conversation with to see if they can take me on. Your second option is selling your art direct directly. In this age of the internet, of course, we don't have to go through resellers if we don't want to. You could set up uh, your very own e-commerce site. The advantage is you'll keep all the profits. The disadvantage is it's going to take you a bit longer, perhaps, to get to the reach and the sales level that you might get with a distributor. So if you like that option, you can set up an e-commerce site using Shopify or any one of, of the e-commerce platforms available online today. The third business opportunity you identify, or the second business opportunity, I think, is the greeting card idea. And I would treat that as a separate strategy. Tim, you could approach companies like Hallmark, but they get thousands of submissions, and it's kind of hard to break through. But you could also look at selling your greeting card product line on your Shopify site if you end up going with a direct-to-market strategy. Challenging business for sure, but I think if you persevere and explore all your options, you'll find the right fit for you. What are your thoughts, Lily? So I was on the opposite side of this because you mentioned that um, you you have had a lot of experiences um, selling to big businesses. I come from the corporate world where people were selling to me. So I was in purchasing and I would have people try to sell their product line to me. And it's very true what you said. A lot of those relationships are already built because a lot of the brand deals are already been made. Uh, what I have done in the past um, with folks like Tim, they would come, I would have um, um, smaller entrepreneurs come to me. It's like, I have this great product that I really want to showcase at your store. And as uh, if you're talking about a purchaser from a, uh, from a big retail chain, which sounds like that's what he wants to do, um, they have a set budget usually. And they, they have a set budget with certain relationships that they already have. I have taken things on consignment, dedicate my budget towards it. So he could possibly offer a consignment. So what it is, a consignment is you will offer to have your product at the store. So they're not paying you uh, to purchase the goods. But if they do sell it, they end, they end up giving you part of the proceeds back. I'm wondering what are your thoughts on consignment from like your end? It's exactly how Walmart works. Uh, people get very excited about selling to Walmart, but the, the scary story is. Yeah. The bulk, as I understand it, of their vendors are all on consignment. Walmart is so powerful that it says, look, if you mm -hmm. want to list a product with us or put a product on our shelves, mm -hmm. here's the deal. You'll send us a million units. You'll pay for those million units. When we sell them, we'll pay you less our cut. So it requires deep pockets and a lot of patience for someone to play out play out that game. And it, but you're right. It's the way of the world for a lot of big companies. It's like, why should they take the risk? And they're saying, you know what? You know, we're happy to happy to list your product. We need your product, but we're not yeah. going to pay until you get paid. Uh, just to complete like twist on things altogether, how do you feel about um, coffee shops? Coffee shops sometimes have nice artwork on the wall. Like, is that a route that you would take? Sure, that's a great route. I see it all the time here in Toronto. My artists have put the little tag on, on beside the painting. Um, mm -hmm. Just last week, actually, I was at an art show called Art Toronto, hashtag Art Toronto, which was hundreds of exhibitors displaying, galleries pretty much, displaying art. So you identified it, Lily. There's an, always a, a couple of ways to go about bringing the product to market. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking we're going to wrap up um, Tim's question as well. I think, um, Tim, if you're passionate about your art, and you want it out there in the market, I think you will find a way, whether if you do it through uh, Roger's suggestion, doing it on an online store altogether, you don't necessarily need to go through a big retailer at all. Uh, if you want to go through a big retailer, I think your story needs to appeal to them. Uh, when I was in purchasing, I loved hearing the story behind why they are doing the things that they do. And, um, and I took a chance on a lot of smaller entrepreneurs as well based on that or if you want to do a coffee shop altogether you can do it too I think if you're passionate you will find a way absolutely never give up yeah exactly okay so one last question it's amazing how time is flying Roger so one last question for you it's uh, from Tammy Tammy saying I'm reaching out to you because I started my own company 
So congratulations, Tammy. That's an awesome thing to do. Uh, it's currently on Amazon, and I'm so happy to be able to get this far. I believe I'm the only one in that area that has this kind of kit. Right now, I'm making the kits in my own flat, and I'm shipping it out to the customers. How can I grow this business? Wow, congratulations, Tammy. Sounds like a good business. I love a niche business, you know, something that's really narrow and targeted. I, I'm assuming you're selling eyelash kits, like eyelash extensions on Amazon? I believe so. I believe so. It's, it's not specified. I think um, they are eyelash kits, like false eyelashes, probably. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Amazon sounds like the perfect platform, uh, in my opinion. So, you know, my advice is what can you do to get really, really good at selling your stuff on Amazon? Amazon is this super powerful, amazing platform that allows you to be as, as much of an entrepreneur as you want to be. So take advantage of all the bells and whistles. Take the Amazon tutorials, which will walk you through things you can do to improve your listing, put more products on there, attract more customers, and make more money. Talk to their help desk people. That's what they're there for. Pick their brains about how you can grow your business using their platform. Read articles online hundreds if not thousands of articles about marketing your, your business on Amazon. And chances are you can tweak your business so it produces the kind of sales that you want. If you really want to go, go all out, you could say, look, I've got Amazon working so well, I want to try other platforms. And there are lots of other options, including uh, eBay, different model, the auction model, or Etsy. So you could also check out other platforms that are, that are e-commerce enabled. I'd also think about what you can do to amplify your presence on Amazon by going beyond Amazon. You know, can you do some promotions of your own to customers or resellers likely to want your product? For example, hair salons or beauty parlors. They seem like a natural customer for you. They could buy your, your eyelash kits and then sell them to their own clients, I would imagine. So if there's something there you can do, maybe that's too much in the weeds for you, but um, if you roll up your sleeves and start contacting associations of hair salons and, and beauty parlors, maybe there's an efficient way to reach out to a lot of them and simply direct them to your Amazon page. I'd also suggest that you get yourself on Facebook if you're not there already, set up a Facebook fan page you want to make it really, really easy for people to share information about your business and about your Amazon page. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you're doing the same thing on Instagram as well. Lily, what are your thoughts? I'm a consumer of uh, false eyelashes. So, uh, so for me, there are so many different types of eyelash kits out there, and I could easily grab one from the drugstore. It's, it's available everywhere. I think for me, um, is is how is your eyelash kit different? It sounds to me that she has differentiated herself from the other eyelash uh, eyelash companies. So for me, what I would really like to see, I'm speaking from a consumer perspective now, because that's this is who she's going to be selling to. I would like to see how different it is on someone. So is there a way? And maybe she's already doing it, Tammy. Is there a way to do like before and after shots? Uh, Roger mentioned on Facebook if you post pictures because it's a beauty product. Uh, you want to show it. You want to show how you're different and um, how can you enhance a woman's beauty through these eyelash kits. I think I would just kind of echo what you're saying. Enhance it with some pictures and testimonials too. If there are some happy customers you have and just ask them, hey, if you're really sincerely happy with my product, why don't you write me a nice testimonial? I could put that on my web page as well to kind of back up the great product you already have. Really good tip. Video would play a big role in what you just talked about. What what can this what mm -hmm. can she do to show the before and the after, or how to use the eyelash product? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the before and after treatment is pretty standard. So, if there's a chance to invest a little bit of money in good quality video, you should see a lot of return from that. Mm. How would you suggest making the video? Would you use um, a third party source, or would you try to do it yourself? This kind of thing, if it's really a product video and paramount to your business, I would invest a few hundred dollars at least and, and hire a professional videographer. 
you know, I, I've worked with a few video companies over the years, and it doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg. Often I find that video production companies find a local one, they'll have a video shoot day where they schedule in a whole bunch of small business owners over the course of a day, maybe everyone gets an hour each, that's all it takes. And you come in prepared with a script, you come in compared with a bit of a storyboard, and they can shoot your one or two minute video, and that's all you need, in a matter of half an hour or less. They'll then add the, the credits, they'll add the visuals, they'll add the text, and you'll probably get a couple of outtakes to choose from. So it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. I certainly wouldn't spend more than $500 to get a good HD quality video done. Mm. What are your thoughts on websites like Fiverr to make videos? Fiverr has a, a great place in the universe for getting uh, things done for, for very little. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a whole lot of experience with Fiverr, to be honest, I'm quite aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, for something like a video, I'd prefer to go with somebody that I know or a company that is recommended to me locally. Okay. All right. I, I don't have a lot of experience with Fiverr. I'm, I'm aware. Of, I'm aware it exists. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that too, because I know they make videos. So, so go with someone locally. And how would you go about finding someone locally? Tap into your business network. Ask people who do you know who mm -hmm. produces videos. Certainly, you can search online. If you know a local photographer, chances are they might know a video person as well, or they might actually do video production. I mean, as a fallback, you could ask a friend who you, you know has got talent in shooting some videos, but I would, I would prefer to see some kind of professional who can bring you into a studio, set up the product, light it properly, and do it. You can also learn to do this stuff yourself, right? There are people on eBay and Amazon who have their own little studios because they do so many products and put so much so much other stuff online. But to really demonstrate the product, especially on a model, which what we're talking about with eyelash kits, I'd rather see a professional involved uh, to help shoot the whole works. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Well, those are all the questions I have for you, Roger. Uh, but I want to find out from you. You mentioned that start is your one word. That's right. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, thank you for that question. You know, when I read Evan's book, Your One Word, I, I thought I had my one word. I thought it was entrepreneur, but then I thought more about it. It's not quite accurate. My one word is start. As yeah. I said at the beginning, I've started 13 small businesses. How crazy is that? I love starting new relationships. I love starting new projects. I love starting the selling process. I love starting a blank page and writing a great small business how-to article. I like starting... Um, new videos, including this one with you, Lily. So start is my mantra, is, is where I get my mojo, and it just feels right. I think if you're gonna pick your one word, you follow Evan's process, then you let it sit for a couple weeks and see if it still resonates with you, and if it does, then you know you've chosen the right word for you. In an age where there are so many businesses not surviving, I mean, uh, you know this, there's a lot of uh, people starting businesses and they give up really easily. For you, who have lasted all these years and you have done 13 businesses, like, is there one thing that you would suggest that everyone does or before starting a business really focus on because of all the success you have had opening, starting your own businesses? For me, it's all about never giving up. Okay. You might look. You might come and go from a whole bunch of businesses, thirteen businesses over the course of your life. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, a bit less, but you might come and go from a number of businesses. The main thing is you want to continue being an entrepreneur. That's what's important to you. You know what you're doing may not be as important as to your personal objective, which is to remain self-employed and have that kind of lifestyle, mm -hmm. which I'm really a fan of. That's a different video. So I would say stay true to yourself. The businesses will come and go. Look after yourself as an entrepreneur. Your relationships are going to be key no matter what business you're in. They're going to survive every business that you, 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 you enter. The relationships will be there. Take care of your finances. That's a tough one for a lot of entrepreneurs. Can you set aside a little money from every venture to make sure you've got some buffer to get the next one going? And surround yourself with positive people. I'm pretty sure Evan Carmichael would say the same thing. You'll get down. You'll get a little bit sidetracked. You'll get a little bit discouraged when you're running a small business. 
And it helps to have positive mentors and associates and people around you who can not only give you advice, but lift up your spirits along the way. Mm. Who lifts up your spirits? I've got a close network of business buddies. I call them business buddies, boys mm -hmm. and girls, men and women who, who I meet with regularly for a, for a, 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 you know, a session, a drink, or a, a meal. And we used to all belong to a, a business networking club, but now we just kind of lean on each other informally and share what we're doing and practice, exchange good ideas, but most of all, just to encourage each other. So it's kind of like my own informal peer networking or peer support group. And how did you go about developing this group? Is, uh, is it um, something that formed organically was, or is it part of an association? It's purely my own circle. There are lots of great organizations out there. I was a member of BNI for a long time, Business Networking International. That's a real formal uh, networking group. You've got chapters all around the world, and they're all about getting together and exchanging leads. But this was just something that kind of came up on my own, a group of small business owners that I know and like to hang out with. And so we get together every month and we talk shop. Nice. All yeah. right. Surround yourself with positive people. I think that's a really good way to end this call. Yeah. Absolutely. We've had a Any great call. Any words? No, I think we covered a lot of stuff. Uh, of course, thanks very much, Lily, for all the, all the work you're doing putting this together. Um, and I'd like to say, of course, everyone, make sure you're, you're visiting Evan Carmichael's channels, especially evancarmichael.com. Mm -hmm. Fantastic YouTube channel. Where, has he reached a million subscribers yet? Has he passed that mark, Lily? Very soon. Very soon. It's supposed to happen within the next month or so. We'll let you know when that happens. It's going to be lots of champagne flowing when that happens. And, <laughs> and party hats. And party hats. So that's terrific. And I'm really enjoying these questions. So let's keep them coming. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Roger. And everybody else, have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.